Fellow colleagues, would you like to hear about my most recent expedition in the new territories? Of course, I'm all ears. That shall be interesting. Alright, here I go then. As you know, the recent events that happened, by which I mean the deactivation of the Psi emissions coming from the factory and the opening of the way north, have allowed us to explore new areas that were previously inaccessible. Soon we learned about a place nicknamed the Nightmare Forest. According to the few stalkers who went there, the so-called Nightmare Forest is a special part of the Red Forest, known to have an unusually high level of psi emissions. Sakharov had just developed a new model of psi protective helmet, and he tasked me to try it out in the Nightmare Forest. Thankfully, I was not going alone. A veteran stalker named Kutuzov was hired to lead me safe and sound to the location. I was a bit nervous about the mission, as well as skeptical about the stalker's reliability, but Sakharov told me everything would be fine, so I agreed to go. <laughs> so naive. <clears throat> anyway, we took everything we needed for the trip and moved north towards the Red Forest. On the way I realized that the stalker really knew what he was doing, and that gave me more confidence. We avoided anomalies, packs of mutants, and even other people, arriving without any problems in the Red Forest. The area was more radioactive than anything else I had seen, but my suit could handle it. The stalker did not seem to care much about it either. Soon we were approaching the target location, so we discussed the plan one last time. We had only one protective helmet, so I was to go alone in the Nightmare Forest. Kutuzov was going to wait for me here, at the edge of the woods, for an entire hour. If I did not come back after an hour, he would leave. The idea of being left alone in this place scared me to the death, but I had no other choice. Besides, one hour should be plenty enough to do what was needed. Walk in the forest, take some readings while testing the Psy helmet, then leave. The whole thing could be done in 15 minutes. Kutuzov wished me good luck, and I stepped forward into the unknown. Soon I realized why this area had its own nickname, and was considered a separate location from the Red Forest. I'm not sure how to describe it, but somehow the trees and the general atmosphere were different. Also, there were almost no sounds in here, and not a single mutant in sight. Surely the Psy emissions had something to do with all of this. I did not feel them at first, which was a good sign because it meant the helmet was working, but my sensor clearly showed the presence of the Psy emissions. Moreover, the further I went into the woods, the more powerful the emissions got. While I was taking the readings, the device suddenly managed to locate a nearby source of the emissions. Thankfully, the Psy helmet was working wonders, therefore I decided to check out what the source was. Knowing that it could be something dangerous, I started to crawl silently in its direction, until I got so close that I finally felt a slight headache. It was nothing compared to that time when the professor showed me his calculations, <laughs> so I ignored it and kept crawling. There was some rock blocking my view. Surely the source of the emissions was behind it. Very slowly, I peeked out of my hiding spot, and I froze in horror. The source was none other than a controller. I almost panicked. But the beast did not notice me, so I managed to calm down. This was a wonderful proof that Sakharov's invention was revolutionary. As I was standing there, I wondered what the controller was up to. It seemed that he was waiting for something. Alright, Mr. Controller, let's see what it is that you are waiting for. 
After a few minutes, I got my answer. I heard something approaching, and suddenly a small silhouette emerged from the nearby bushes. It resembled a mutated dwarf, wearing old torn-out clothes. The two monsters approached each other, and to my absolute fascination, they started to... talk? Unfortunately, I could not hear well, but from my position it seemed more like growling and mumbling than actual talk. Either way, the controller and the dwarf were communicating, and it seems that they quickly came to an agreement. The dwarf searched inside his clothes and pulled out an object. I was shocked to discover that it was a bottle. A bottle of vodka! The controller picked up the bottle and gave the dwarf something in return. It was a piece of bread. In an instant, the transaction was over, and both mutants disappeared in the forest. I stood there in awe, not able to process what had just happened. Did I really witness a trade between two of the zone's creatures? Or did the psi emissions make me hallucinate? After some time, I suddenly remembered about the one hour limit that I had. I checked my clock and realized that the time was almost up. Panicked, I ran away towards the place where my guide was waiting, following the same path I took to reach the controller. Getting out of the nightmare forest was easy. Unfortunately, I bumped straight into a pack of dogs immediately after. I shot a few bullets towards them while running away in fear. I sprinted as fast as I could. Yet, the beasts were faster. They were closing out onto me. I thought I was done for. That's when Kutuzov showed up. He opened fire at the mutants, killing a few of them and scaring the others away. It was over as fast as it began. I fell on the ground, exhausted thanking the stalker for saving my life. He revealed that, since the hour had passed, he was about to leave, when he heard the gunshots and the barking, prompting him to get back. After I caught my breath, we quickly went back to Yentar. As you can imagine, Sakharov was very pleased by the results. I have the feeling that he will send more and more expeditions like this one. So, you know what to expect now.